Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be continuing with the NumPy tutorial series in Python by showing you how you can join arrays together. So as usual, I'm going to get started straight away and move you onto the screen. Okay, cool, so we're in PyCharm and we are doing tutorial nine, as I mentioned, and we're going to be joining arrays together. Now, as usual, I've imported the relevant modules, so we import NumPy as NP. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to import or install NumPy, I do mention it in my very first video of this tutorial series, so if you're unfamiliar, then I just recommend checking that video out. Cool, so let's get started straight away and show you how you can start joining arrays together. So we're just gonna say, as usual, joining arrays, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create two one-dimensional arrays. Cool, so let's say array one is going to equal np.array because that's the usual notation to create an, an, an array in NumPy. We'll just say one, two, three, four, five. Let's say that, cool. And then we'll do another array. So array two is going to equal np.array. Now let's have some different numbers. Let's have, let's follow on with what we had and do six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, cool. So we've got two one-dimensional arrays here, nice. Now let's do exactly what you know is said in the title of this video and join the two together. So it's known as concatenation, so concatenating. I always worry that I spell that wrong because it's a very hard word to, you have to kind of speak it out loud like I did to, to be able to spell it. So concatenating these two arrays together. And this is honestly so simple in numpy and in python so the way we do that we'll just create a new array we'll call it joined array and we'll say np dot concatenate there we go it helps to be able to spell the, the word <laughs> because obviously you're going to use it in the um command so concatenate basically means join the two together so here i'll just put concatenate slash join just so you know the two um technically you know they mean the same thing so np.concatenate. Now in here we're going to type array1 and then we're just going to put array2. Cool. And we're going to print this joined array. Okay. So let's just make sure I'm running the right Python file, which is that one there. Cool. So it's, it's run the Python file. If we move up so you can see what it's produced, here we have an array and as expected, it has joined this array here. So if we just put here what this array will be, um, you know, because obviously you can read this and think, well, this must be the, the array, but obviously that's not, that's not the array because arrays don't have commas. So that's the array here of this array one. And similarly, this is just, was it six? Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, cool. So what's happened is we've joined this array here to this array and you've got two arrays and they've stuck together like that cool and that's what's happened here and you've joined them together so this would be handy let's say you had different data from you know different places and let's say we had you know you wanted to look at some data collectively and let's just say for example a very simple example you have shoe sizes of university students for example from a whole range of different universities so each university is different data set and you just want to put all of the data in one array work it together this is exactly how you do it so that's the power of, of joining arrays and it does obviously get a lot more <laughs> and powerful than that but it's just a really nice handy um, way of doing it so we've got two one-dimensional arrays and we've joined them together so now what we're going to do is we're going to join arrays along rows so to make sense of what's going on, we're gonna create two two-dimensional arrays this time, because obviously rows don't really make sense too much in one-dimensional um, arrays. So we're just gonna, we're gonna do a two-dimensional array and show you how we join along rows. So let's say array, we could do, let's just say array three, just because it's, it's consistent with what we've written above. We'll say maybe one, two, three, and then here we'll have four, five, six. So again, this produces something along the lines of like that. Obviously, if I print this array, we'll just show you what obviously it looks like in PyCharm. It's more kind of like this, so it's more kind of stacked on top of each other. So it's not quite like this, but I just I just popped that there just to remind us that it's no longer with with the commas as, as lists were. Okay, cool. So let's do array four and we're just gonna do something very similar. 
Where, what number did I get up to? Six. Okay, so seven, eight, nine. Let's enclose that with a bracket. And another one here. So 10, 11, 12. Cool. And I will just put another hashtag here and we will just say seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. Oh, does it fit on? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we'll print these two arrays as we did, as I just did with array three. And if we run, so obviously we've got these two arrays here and they are essentially, I suppose, each of the elements inside the array are stacked on top of each other as you know, as you can see here. So we're going to try join these arrays along their rows. So obviously that's one row and then that's the second row and then that's the second row. So the way that we do that is we will assign a new variable. We'll say row array. I mean, we could put joined, we could put joined, joined row array. Gosh, that's a bit of a mouthful. This can be anything. This could simply just be the letter B, but I'm just kind of trying to keep it consistent with what we're doing. So joined row array. Gosh, that is a, definitely a mouthful. So you say np np dot similar before concatenate, and we're going to have the array. So we'll have array three, array four. I couldn't see the letter. I can't see the number four on my keyboard then. Array three and array four, and then in here we're simply just going to say axis. Now the axis is going to equal one. Okay. So if you did my video, if you've been following this tutorial series, you will see that we have come across axis before. So axis one is usually assigned for rows and axis zero is usually assigned for columns. Well, there we go. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay. So we've got this. Oh, we need to print it. Obviously common mistake. I always do that. I end up typing things out and expect Python to just do it miraculously and then it doesn't. So, okay, we'll run this print the joined array okay so what has happened python has taken the rows and joined them together as expected so this here was row one if you remember the two stacked are stacked on top of each other so that's row one and this is row one as well so it will concatenate those two together so we'll end up with one two three seven eight nine which is what we get and then here we have the second row remember stacked on top of each other so four five six and then in this second array 10, 11, 12, and that's exactly what we get here. The two rows are concatenated together. So cool, that's how we concatenate arrays together when they get in higher dimensions. And again, it's just a nice handy tool to have when you start doing a little bit of data analysis. Cool, so we've done joining arrays. Now, what I'm gonna move on to in this video is showing you how you can actually split arrays. So splitting arrays, I suppose, is, opposite, is the opposite of joining arrays. You kind of decreasing the number of, of, of elements and everything in it so we're just going to show you i'm just going to show you splitting arrays because it's just another handy kind of operation to know when it comes to numpy in general so we're going to start fresh with an array we'll call it r for array and we'll just say np dot array and we're just going to have you know a standard how far do we want we'll just say six um one dimensional array so we'll just put here one dimensional array now we're going to just start you know straight away and, and show you how to split arrays so we'll say let's say split array now this is going to equal np dot now we're going to have array underscore split okay so it's caught here we know it's it's legitimate you know, function for numpy so np dot array underscore split and we're good, just going to put array in here with a positional argument so how many times do we want to split this up let's say let's say three to begin with okay well we'll print this split array now let's see what happens okay so we get this back now this is really worth remembering when it comes to splitting arrays python well numpy does it like this we have array and then the numbers kind of corresponding to the array that's been split. So we notice here, you know, immediately we have one, two, three, uh, sorry, we have one, two, three, four, and five, six. And what's happened is this array has been split into three parts. So the first two, the second two, and the third two, cool. But it's just remembering that this is how Python produces it. We have this array around side it. Now, I will be doing something 
literally in, in, in a minute to show you how you can you know recall that that given array back again so that's nice we split it into three because we can split it into three what happens if i said we'll split it into four and i'll run it okay so what's happened python has said well we'll split it into four but in you know obviously because we can't split it into two each you know each time we'll do the first two the second two and then we'll we'll split the final two into their own so we've got five and six so that's something again you know worth just just remembering with this split array is that the argument you put in here will split it up you know in ways that you may not expect it to but i mean this is i suppose intuitive you would expect it to you know keep the first and then split the final few um is just something to remember so we'll move that back to three and we have a kind of nice consistent here so that's how you split it up but obviously we this isn't really any use to us we have it says it's an array um but it doesn't really kind of i suppose give us much so let's start recalling some of the elements within these split arrays so the way that we so the way we can do that is um very simply we could just say print now let's take the split array and return the zeroth element okay so if we run this notice that we get this array back this array this exact array here so cool if, if i did that for every index so split array one print split array two so that would correspond to the zeroth element would be this here the first would be this here and the second would be this here cool so let's run cool nice we've got one two three four five six <laughs> we've got one two three four five six nice so this takes you know this kind of ugly looking form here and it produces nice arrays again so that's how you can recall specific elements within this split array because obviously what you'll notice is when you split this array it puts it into a list again and the arrays are obviously then written in, in this format so this is a nice way of you know recalling so we'll just put here recalling elements within split a uh, split array um, and i'll just put returns the ooh, arrays um in a nice format and I'll, instead i'll just put returning returns the split array in a nice format nice okay cool so that is the video today it has basically just been you know showing you how to join and split arrays and they're just really kind of handy operations that you will need and you will definitely use throughout your time if you do go on and use numpy throughout you know data analysis whatever it's in these were commands that i did frequently use especially <laughs> joining joining arrays together when i did my internship so I thought that you know the handy let's let's include them in the video but that that is the video today i hope you have learned something new with numpy and this all this code all my code that i've put on my channel um previously and and from now on will all be on my github account so the link will be in the description so if you want to have the code as a backup just to check then i put all my code on my github but that is the video today and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you all in the next video.